What is going on everybody? For those of you who don't know, my name is Chris and I work at a company called Technicians and we do aquarium service. And I bring you guys along on a ride with me and I go to tanks at different customers' houses and um, any type of issues that we run into, I try to share with you guys and how we, um, the problems as well as the solutions that we use here at Technicians. Also show you some cool tanks that I service. Um, today is one of those days where I have a customer that we just started servicing their tank and his corals are dying. Um, I guess more specifically, his LPS corals are dying. So he has a Duncan coral that um, I've been told that's not doing really well. A Ganyapura frag that was doing really well that's not doing well. And uh, I think a trumpet coral or something like that uh, that's not doing really well. So, so I'm on my way there right now and I kind of want to share with you guys this process because I want to see um, what we can identify and what we can see in his aquarium that would be a problem. Also, if you stay tuned uh, a little bit later on, I come going to this really awesome tank. I haven't been there in a, uh, in a minute. It's not on my route, it's on Kaylee's route. And the tank looks absolutely amazing right now. And I'm really happy with the way it's coming along. And I wanted to share that with you guys too. Now it's dealing with its own problems too, which I'll, I'll get into when we're there. Um, in the meantime, let's start with the first tank. All right, sorry the tank's a little cloudy. I just did a bunch of, I uh, just did a water change, things are stirred up. But this is what I'm looking at right here. Uh, these zoas right here had a bunch of vermitted snails in the middle of them, and you can see they're all kind of tucked in there. The ones up here were okay, the rastas, but there's vermitted snails throughout there too, and the ones that are close to the vermitted snails are all closed up. And then we go over here, there's some bald spots missing there. But this, this zoa right here doesn't have any vermitted snails on it, possibly because it's in the sand, and they're doing great. Um, this frog spawn, uh, one of its heads bailed, and it floated back there somewhere. Uh, if we look at this trumpet, there are some vermetids on it also. My guess is it's stinging those trumpet corals. And the mushrooms like this, Recordia is doing fine. So I don't believe it's a water chemistry issue. Then the Duncan coral has vermetids on it also. It's also growing hair, um, algae on it. But there's vermetid snails on the base of it. Pallies look great. There's vermetids throughout there, but not as bad. These mushrooms look great. This Ganyapura was thriving. It was doing so good at, at one point. But if we look closely, there's vermetids all around it. And when I kind of was scrubbing the tank, they were releasing their little slime trail or whatever that is, and it was laying across there. The Ganyapur, parts of it are still out, but it's definitely receded. Um, this is the algae right here, the brown algae that's throughout the whole tank. I stirred things up a bit um, just to kind of get it into the water column and get it out. There's also uh, lettuce algae in here. But this brown algae was throughout the whole bottom of the sand bed, but I stirred it up. There's also some bubble algae in here. Her mid is all in the back here. Oh, it's hard to see on film. That's what we got going on. Added four beautiful blue discosoma mushrooms. Hopefully that helps. I think that's all I wanted to show. The only fish that could potentially be messing with the corals is this blue throat trigger. And there is a bristle tooth tang in here, but I know we've had bad luck with blue throat triggers in the past, just recently, 
we've had to take a couple out. But um, I don't know, just a theory. I'm, I'm leaning more towards the vermitted snails. All right, on to a tank that looks a lot better. Here we are at the next customer's house. This this tank is just looking amazing. I mean, the, the corals are just growing like crazy. We're getting new heads on everything, great growth. This tank is busting at seams with coral and I love it. Um, this toadstool doesn't look like much, but I'll explain why in a second. You can see a little bit of it right there, but um, you see these red mushrooms? I freaking love these Discosoma red mushrooms. Um, I've been growing these like crazy. We have so many of these, uh, and these blue discosomas are one of my favorite corals too. Uh, both dis I just love discosoma mushrooms in general. I love all the different colors, the blues, the greens, the reds, the golds, the orange, I love them all. Um, we have some soft corals growing up top here. The euphilia hammers are growing great. Now this toadstool right here, it doesn't look like much, but what's happening is you can see that down to the left right there, the polyps are out. It's basically, it's uh, reproducing. So it tears off there and then that piece drops and sprouts another toadstool. And once it goes through that, the polyps will come out again. Uh, hammer coral, neon uh, hammer coral looking great. Cabbage coral, that used to be like nothing. And now it's growing like crazy because that it's not looking good there for a bit. Now there just goes another green mushroom. And what is that? that that's trumpet corals right there looking nice and fluffy. That's nice. Got a, a uh, bunch of kenya tree which i'm gonna end up having to trim look at this monopora growing like crazy you got the purple we got the res um definitely got to stay on top of that we got some really good growth here and then you can see the other toadstools doing the same exact thing it's all curled up polyps are not but usually they are but it's going through this little uh, weird reproductive phase and that's just tearing itself up and again it drops to this to the bottom and then you see little pieces right there it's growing like crazy in this tank there's tons of these little baby toadstools everywhere but that's okay for this uh coral it's completely normal and then we talk about the golds and the orange disc with some of the mushrooms right there right next to a blue one I, I i love these corals they're so amazing i wish i could get a hold of some more gold ones and how do you know it's a mature older aquarium look at all these feather dusters everywhere this is how you know this tank's been up for over 10 years is it's got it's got some real life in it a real ecosystem in this aquarium there is some uh, too much kenya tree in here i'm gonna have to do some fragging that's your biggest worry with this tank right now is just the amount of coral growth that you really got to stay on top of it because you got to frag this um monopore up you got to frag the kenya trees you got to make sure things aren't stinging each other so for instance like that bubble coral was doing really bad and we trimmed the kenya tree now the kenya tree is coming back so we'll have to we'll have to cut we'll have to get rid of that kenya tree this kenya tree um, possibly some more around here and then we to the other side of the aquarium and you can see over here that little bang guy cardinal um, on the other side of the aquarium we got some star polyp we got another hammer coral that was that fell that's doing better now we glued it back up more cabbage coral that used to be the smallest little piece and so we cleared up some areas and, and now it's growing great got some yellow sponge in there which I'm not too worried about it's a pally grandis tucked away in the corner and again, another toadstool dropped on the side here. This stuff is growing like crazy. It's insane. Um, what else we got? We have on this corner is a bunch going on. We got a beautiful frog spawn. Look at the size of that thing. Good Lord. My God, that's huge. Look how far it's ex extending out. And that was dying and we put it down there in the sand and now it's coming back. That's great. It's a great sign. We'll have to find a place for that up top. More mushrooms, gonna have to clean up some more of this Kenya tree because it's starting to sting. It slept up, more, more toadstool. Toadstool sneak. Man, we're gonna have to frag, we're gonna have to get some of these toadstools out of here. There's too many of them. They're everywhere. That lepto, that 24 karat lepto, that was one of my corals that I put in this tank years ago, about four years ago, and it's doing amazing. Um, along with that blasto right there, that, that was my blasto. I sold that to them. That was one I had in my tank originally back in the day. And it's kind of sad to see it because I don't have it anymore. And it's kind of sad to see it in this tank, but uh, at least it's, you know, a part of it's still there. Maybe one day I can talk him into letting me get a piece of it because it's just so beautiful. And then again, the other side of the monopore, this thing is growing like crazy, but we are going to have to cut this purple one back a bit because it's shading the red and it could, it's going to end up dying in the areas that it's shaded. We won't be able to get light there. And, um, I prefer the, the pinkish red over the purple just because the color on it's better. So we got to do some fragging. Like I said, a lot of fragging in this tank that we have to do. 
other side of the tank is I had to frag some of these blue mushrooms off because they were covering the uh, zoanthids. You can see the zoanthids are tucked in because the mushrooms are actually encroaching on their territory and stinging them. So now I'm having to um, keep that in check. And those discosoma much mushrooms, as much as I like them, they do sting. They have a, a pretty potent sting. So I got to go throughout here and I got to frag them up, make sure they're not touching any corals, uh, along with the Kenya tree. And some of these other soft corals potentially could sting. Uh, although, so far as fish go, we have a fairy wrasse, we have a yellow chorus wrasse, we have, uh, what else we got over here? We got a blue hippo tang that's hiding. Um, uh, we have that little bristle tooth tang, I'm not sure what kind it is, but it's a bristle tooth tang, so we have a coral tang. Uh, we have the PJ Cardinals, two of those. And on the other side, we have a uh, mandarin dragonette, which is just loving this tank because there's so much life in here. And clownfish up to the top. A green spotted puffer. And then if you look through that little cave system right there, there is a blue throat trigger uh, in this aquarium too, which always hides when I come. All in all, I'm really happy with the way this tank is coming along. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.